Hi, this is Jane Taylor again. I'm going to do another pharmacology lecture. This time we're going to talk about some endocrine drugs, immune modulators, and reproductive medications. And we're going to do it this time in a case study, which I think is pretty interesting. We'll talk about how we're going to apply pharmacology to um, a patient situation. And let's get started. Okay, by the end of this session, our objective is that you're able to implement four classifications of medications within a case scenario. You're going to be able to pull that information from your farm knowledge and uh, be able to apply it appropriately and remember drugs. Manage the health conditions of patients who need medications for the following issues. For endocrine problems, oncology problems, immune problems, and reproductive problems. So that's pretty, that's pretty big, right? All right, let's get started. Here's our case study. Camille is a 28-year-old female who was born in West Africa and lives with uh, and has lived with her large extended family in Puerto Rico for three years. She lost her home to Marie, uh, Hurricane Maria. She arrives at the clinic with her two children, Sebastian, who is a four-year-old male, and Alondra, who is a two-year-old female. Now, Camilla and Alondra present with productive coughs, night sweats, and fevers. Hmm, that's a pretty suggestive trio. Alondra is of most concern to Camilla, who states the child won't eat and is losing weight. None of them have had a health assessment in the last year. The children have been seen by the local health department in Puerto Rico for immunizations, but there's no records. Camilla's only health care was prenatal visits. Wow. Okay, so when we look at the situation, we've got patients now. Let's look and see. How are we going to approach this from a nursing standpoint, or even get to the meds? How are we going to approach this situation? Hmm. Well, let's let's. Uh, what would be the first step of the nursing process? And if you said the first step in the nursing process is assessment, you'd be absolutely right. Before we go and say we're going to do this, that, and the other thing, let's get the information we need. Now, let's take a look at this situation. Let's do a little analysis before we start asking questions, because let's so, so we'll know what questions to ask. We've got a 28-year-old with two children. Okay. Um, well, she's living with extended family, so she's living with a lot of people. Could be a crowded situation that always contributes to a lot of health problems. Okay. Um, well, I don't know that much about her socioeconomic status, but I do know she's homeless right now, which is concerning. I do know that she hasn't seen a doctor except for prenatal visits, hasn't even seen, nobody's seen a doctor for a year. That's very concerning. Her health maintenance um, may contribute to problems. And there's that productive cough, night sweats, and fever. And the child won't eat and is losing weight. I wonder how long that's been going on. How much weight has she lost? Um, night sweats, fever, and productive cough. TB, HIV, there's a lot of bad things that could be that, that's in my mind now, all right? So that's our situation. Let's see what kind of assessment data we can get. All right, so Camilla, we'll start with Camilla. She's 28, height 5'2", weight 185. All right, right there, she's, she's overweight. That's maybe a BMI in the mid-30s somewhere, so she's clearly overweight um, into obese, okay? Temp 101, elevated. Pulse 92, respiration's 32. She's got something going on. That sounds, she sounds hyperdynamic. She sounds like she's got some infectious process going on. Um, her pap smear, she is HPV positive, human papillomavirus positive. All right, glucose is 186. Now, I don't know if that's fasting or random. If it's fasting, it's way high. Shouldn't be over 100. If it's random, it's still pretty high. She really shouldn't be over 180 pretty much any time if she has normal glucose metabolism. Because at 180, you start spilling sugar into the urine. Gonorrhea positive. Hmm. Tuberculosis, positive history. So we don't know if she has it at the moment, but she has a positive history. She's sexually active with no contraceptives. That tells me a lot about her um, infections there. She had gestational diabetes with the kids. Immigration status, unknown. The night sweats, the shortness of breath and productive cough, but she's not on any meds. All right, so there's a lot of information there. Now the doctors are gonna look at this. 
and they're going to they're going to say let's get more information what do we want to know okay we want to know what's going on in those lungs of course we want to know what's going on with that infection one of, well you know she's got hpv does she have anything else we know tb and hiv go together like that right tb it's hard to catch tb if someone's coughing at you unless you're living in a household full of people and in close conditions then it's easier but if you have hiv it's really easy to get tuberculosis all right so let's see we've done some data the doctors have collected some data for us and here's what we now know she has iron deficiency anemia okay didn't see that in there anywhere we really didn't have any indicators in there but it sort of goes along with poor health maintenance and possibly low socioeconomic status. We don't really know that though. She has cervical cancer. So sorry to hear that. The HPV puts her at very high risk. So HPV infection is a high risk for cervical cancer. Good to remember. She has chlamydia and GC. GC is gonorrhea. Anytime somebody has gonorrhea, test them for chlamydia. If they have chlamydia, test them for gonorrhea. The two of them go together very frequently. She, um, let's see, she has active TB. Uh-oh. All right. But she is HIV negative, so good. That's a blessing. She has type 2 diabetes. Well, we sort of saw that. She was obese. She has a history of gestational diabetes. That's a strong risk factor. And she had a high, uh, high glucose reading. Okay, now we got to think about it. So, okay, so she's got cancer, she's got diabetes, she's got tuberculosis, she's got some, she's got some chronic things going on, and acute infection, the TB, and she has, she has cancer now. So those are, those are all important to think about. We want to think about the meds that she's needed, that she needs, and what she needs to get, you know, what kind of priorities she needs to have in her care. We want to keep this lady alive we want to do our best for her we want to meet her health needs so let's see she has tuberculosis really we've got to take care of that first she's going to get drug therapy do you remember the drugs though for tuberculosis boom isoniazid rifampin ethambutol and perizinamide she's going to start with the four drug therapy and that's pretty standard now isoniazid that's or isoniazid it's i-n-h Good to remember INH. Now that was the first oral TB drug they had, very effective drug. Now there's something really important to remember with isoniazid. Let's see if you remember this. I think anesthesia is neuropathy. If you take isoniazid without taking B6, so B vitamin, you will get neuropathies. So you'll get paresthesias, tingling in the fingers, and et cetera. So that's really, that's something they're gonna test you on. Guaranteed, if they talk about isoniazid, they're going to make sure you remember about giving B6, which is um, one of the B vitamins. All right, rifampin. You remember, rifampin starts with R, as does the color red. Rifampin turns your pee and all your body fluids red, turns your eyeball fluid red, red or orange. Okay, so that's that's one thing that definitely remember with rifampin. Ethambutol. Now, this is an interesting one. This is one of like two drugs that I've ever heard of that affect, have ocular effects. Now I've heard a couple more, but anyway, it affects your color perception. Do you remember those eye charts? It's called the Ishihara eye chart. It's like the circle and it's all different colors and you have to look, do you see a number five or a number 23 in there? That's to test your color vision. Do that before you give the thambutol because that may change with the drug. Pyrazinamide, liver toxicity. They all cause liver toxicity. All right, so we're going to treat her TB, and we're going to tell her, don't skip doses. Let me watch. Open up. I want to see you swallow it because compliance is critical. If you skip doses, you're going to develop multidrug-resistant TB. All right, cervical cancer. Well, that's a high priority. She's going to get a hysterectomy. Now, if she wanted to, um, if she was interested in having more children, they might try a more conservative approach, probably, but still surgical. But she's going to opt for the hysterectomy. And she's going to get chemotherapy. Now they have cisplatin. Hmm, now, cisplatin is a good drug to remember. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Cisplatin, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, cisplatin causes hearing loss. So you really want to remember cisplatin 
hearing loss. That's like 30% of everybody who takes this plant and loses hearing. So this is platin, hearing loss. So remember me yelling at you. Um, type two diabetes. Well, what's the first mainstay of therapy? Lifestyle changes. We wanna tell her about getting to a healthy weight. We wanna tell her about healthy amount of exercise, healthy eating habits. The most important thing she can do is whatever she puts in her mouth. But then we're also gonna probably start her, um, she's gonna be started on metformin. So that's a really important drug. Remember, what does metformin do? Is it insulin? No. It stops your liver from breaking down glycogen. So you don't make new sugar, which is handy if you're trying to keep your blood sugar down. Chlamydia and, and GC, gonorrhea. Well, she's gonna get some antibiotics. She's gonna get a shot in the pill a shot in the pill. She's going to get ceftriaxone and azithromycin. Ceftriaxone shot, I am, and she's going to get an azithromycin pill. And iron deficiency anemia, well, what do you think she needs? She needs iron. She's going to get um, iron sulfate. She's also going to take B-complex vitamins, which are going to be very helpful with that isoniazid. She's going to take vitamin D. Okay. 